You are listening to the Quarter Transmissions and Five Year Mission Episode Ten. And now, here are Craig and Jeff. Welcome to the kickoff of the next series of What Are Little Songs Made Of? Uh, we are your hosts, Jeff Hewlett. And Craig Cohen. And we are here with all five members of Five Year Mission once again. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey! hey. So we're, we're in the middle of, or getting close to the end of your Kickstarter for the Spock's Brain Project. And I, I know that you guys have blown away your original amount and your many of your stretch goals. How are you guys feeling right now about how the Kickstarter's going? Awesome. Elated. Very excited. It's incredible. So did you have all of the rewards and the stretch rewards in mind prior to the beginning of the Kickstarter? Or did you just come up with them on the fly as you shattered each and every stretch goal? We had the stretch goals in mind before we... We tried to make this one a little more organized. Hmm. Than the first time because we were kind of we didn't really know what we were doing the first Learning time. As we go, yeah. I think I think we it, it turned out pretty well, but this time we we planned a little better as far as stretch goals and we tried to give along with the stretch goals we um, implemented some incentives. So you know if we hit the stretch goal, everybody gets something, not just us. And I think that made made a big difference. So uh, we we've added some things some incentives along the way but for the most part we pretty much knew what we wanted to do i gotta say guys the stuff you added to the stretch goals is really really great and and i was excited when you blew past five thousand because it means that us as backers are going to get five demos from the album and the next stretch goal will get us all of the demos so uh <laughs> I, I I do hope you guys hit that because I am really looking forward to hearing <laughs> the <two> these, <laughs> these demos. Good luck with that. <laughs> so I know you guys said you never released any demos of any kind before. Was it a was it a tough decision? Did you guys uh, all agree that releasing the demos as a as an incentive was a good idea? Reluctantly, well, we, actually, we never all agree. On anything. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had talked about a long time ago that there were plenty of demos that were decently recorded of decent quality that, that could probably put it, be put out at some point in some form we just didn't know how or, or when we were going to do it so th- there's been some there sitting there that, that definitely could be released and i think would be interesting for fans to hear we were sitting around trying to think of good incentives you know and we had just you know for the first level which we we were fairly confident what we would hit you know we wanted it to be something fun but not you know this it's a cool exclusive button but it's not you know it wasn't something that uh was going to be really hard for us to to do it was it took a lot more thought when we were talking about what we wanted to do next and when we started throwing around the idea of putting out the demos because the demos are you know it's kind of us in raw form so uh but i think ultimately we thought it would be cool for fans and we just decided to you know what the hell <laughs> now guys last time we talked um i don't think you had the artwork yet do you want to talk, talk a little bit about the the artwork for for the album uh yeah it's uh, my friend shelby kelly i've known him for about a decade now and uh he used to do the artwork for this record store that i worked in and then i joined a band with him and it was kind of nice having like a built-in artist in the band and uh i've just always loved shelby's style and he he can crank out art, beautiful art, like nobody else. And he has so many different styles that he can choose from. And he went with kind of a Monty Python-esque kind of thing for this cover. And I think it turned out amazing. If, 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 you, want to, if you want to check anything else out by him, just look up Shelby Kelly, uh, Kelly Kelly with an E-Y. And he has some amazing stuff out there. Yeah, the artwork you have listed on the Kickstarter looks really awesome. So I, I, I can't wait to see it as it's printed on the uh, 
the actual CD when it comes out. Yeah, and you also have some other artwork that you showcased on the Kickstarter. Do you want to talk about that? <laughs> oh, the the poster art? Yeah. Um, oh, the painting, yeah. 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 Uh, a, a friend of ours that we've all known for a while uh, named Wayne Birch, he does a lot of art in town here related to all the bands and music scene. He's putting on, he, he's promoting the show for our CD release. So he painted the po- the painting for the poster for the for the flyer for the show. It's a lot of for this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> anyway, he he brought the painting in and gave it to us, and so we decided to offer it uh, as an incentive. That's a reward uh, or a reward. Oh, yeah. I mean, for for fans. So one lucky person, if they're willing to pay for it, can get that. It's a really cool painting. Well, that's I, not all either. I'm kind of hoping that uh, secretly that nobody gets it because I kind of like it. <laughs> I'd like to keep it for myself. That's like, that's perfect because, you know, somebody out there just wants to thwart you. That's true. <laughs> it's good, good for it, us. What's, what's bad for it, you is good for us. Yeah. Well, and Wayne offered to do something else too. Yes. Uh, Wayne, uh, the artist, also offered to, um, he, he said if we wanted to offer a reward, for somebody to have him paint them into a painting with us, then uh, they can they can choose that reward and get that painting. That's really? awesome. That's there awesome. are really um, reward levels for for every budget, if you will, here. And I, I think you guys did a great job of, of, of giving a lot of options for for pledges. So uh, we'll have a link to the the Kickstarter in the, in the show notes, and I know we've put it on our page and we've shared your page before. So. Uh, you know, we have pledges ra- raging from as low as um, five dollars all the way up to a thousand dollars. You know, there's there's, there's definitely a, a, a pledge level for everyone. Yeah, you guys are just as a, as of this recording, you're just over sixty two hundred of the seven thousand dollar stretch goal with about ten days or so left. So it's looking pretty good based on the past uh, weeks of of performance, right? Oh yeah, I mean we were having like thousand dollar weeks there. Yeah. That's amazing. We uh, last week we did an incentive. We had the original um, concept art for the the album, and um, we uh, offered that as an incentive to whoever put us over six uh, six thousand. So uh, that worked out pretty well. So I think we're going to try to come up with something for this week as well, and pro- probably something for next week uh, to finish it out. So you know, keep keep your eyes out for that to see what kind of weird stuff we throw up there (laughs) now the last time we talked i think you guys were still in the midst of recording this did you have any changes towards the end of the project that you know that maybe took you in a different direction than you thought we scrapped the entire thing and started (laughs) (laughs) we threw out all patrick songs Uh i mean nothing that really changed the direction of it um it was the mixing process that was uh it's always tedious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, just making us bang our heads against the wall. We became enemies. But not in a again. good way. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 to give the listeners a little bit of insight into the mixing process, is that something you guys are, are doing in-house? Is is somebody take, or Are you guys each taking cracks at your songs and then bringing them, those mixes back to the band? Or how does the mixing process actually work? Well, what, what typically happens is <laughs> I, Mike, do... The majority of the mixing, uh, I'll get all the songs together and, and, and get the levels close to where they need to be. Then I send them out to the guys, and they all send back notes of how they want the songs to be changed. And this goes on for it's days an and weeks, process of months, months. And, and then and then and then finally, at, at some point, Noah shows up on my doorstep <laughs> and everything. and comes in. Yeah, not only will he re-record several bits, but then he'll sit down for like 12 hours at my computer and completely remix his songs. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have to re Then I send these mixes out again and then he sends me back notes, undo everything I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me give you an example of most of the the mixing process. It's <clears throat> it, we you know, one of us says turn turn the bass up and another of us says, turn the bass down. And then Mike says, okay. And then he sends the same exact mix out again. <laughs> and then we go, yeah, yeah, okay, that sounds good. It sounds good. That's like the whole process right there. Pretty much, yeah. Got real quiet. 
Sorry. So last time we talked, uh, we we had asked some for some listener questions and feedback while we were getting ready to start the the next batch of episodes. So we did get some some feedback and some questions from Facebook, and uh, we would like to uh, put them out to you guys now if you're ready to handle those. Do it. All right. So well, the first one's kind of a, a half question, uh, I, I guess, uh, half comments, and that's from uh, Alex. Uh, Lindner, I guess you you guys know her pretty well. <laughs> yes, we do. Wait, who? Yeah, familiar. <laughs> so uh, the, this this first comment is: uh, if we want to hear uh, you guys laugh, ask about how often Menagerie Part Two is played live. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's what's the uh, what's the the reasoning behind that comment? We we actually recently talked about playing the Menageries together. One and two back to back at a at a show. Actually, we were gonna play Menagerie one and two, and then the Cage, or I think the Cage maybe yeah. before. But it just didn't it just didn't pan out. Um, we we we've never played. Yeah, Menagerie we've never live. played Menagerie never. live, and I think originally it was just because we didn't have that many songs, mm-hmm. and we wanted the uh, you know we wanted the ones we did play to kind of rock and keep the show moving. And now we have a lot of songs, so we have the luxury of being able to, you know, throw those in every once in a while. We just, we just haven't really. And we decided for the uh, CD release show for Spock's Brain, we're going to play Year One in its entirety. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> and only year without one. Menagerie <laughs> Two. We're not playing, we're not playing Menagerie Two, except for Menagerie Two. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a, a follow-up question uh, from Alex, and I. This is, uh, I guess this is for Mike specifically. Uh, she says, is there any song that you didn't want? I guess that means a song you didn't want to write yourself. Well, originally I planned on writing all of them myself. <laughs> but I don't know if I can really answer that. I can't think of any episode that I wouldn't want to write a song for, so I guess not. Lights of Zeus. Lights of Zeus. No, that's well, a whole... We, we have like 10 versions of that. We, we'd like to officially announce on this podcast <laughs> no. in the year 2017 <laughs> in Lights of Zetar Cloud Miner Split EP. Wow. <laughs> Say anything more about it, but there it is for you. Well, we will be waiting anxiously for that one. Oh, that's yeah, kind of yeah. You know what? That's that's true. I mean, I, I would I would write it for sure, but um, the preamble. Um, Omega oh, Glory. Omega Glory. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think if, if if I had to choose one episode that I didn't want to write a song for, it would be Omega Glory. And the children shall lead. Ooh. Oh. You have to. I have that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only one I have. He doesn't written. want it, but he has that. I have Omega Glory. I think Omega Glory is... All right. And there you have the next question is from Paul Denon. I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. Uh, and his question is, how difficult is it to sing the line by an enemy who must adhere with a straight face? <laughs> well... <laughs> I've really only had to sing it once <laughs> to, to record it. Uh, I mean, a couple of times for practicing and, and making the demo. But we've that's another song that we've never done live. And um, You play piano on that one. Yeah. yeah that's, that's one of the reasons um, you're not Billy Joel. So. <laughs> right, right. So, just, how, just like how I'm not Phil Collins. Uh, I mean, I, I actually really like that line, and I don't think it would be hard to, to sing live. But, but yeah, I, I don't think... I don't think it would be very difficult. Cool. So Paul goes on to also say that Year Two is his favorite of your albums, and he's looking forward to listening to the song backstories when we, we get into those tracks. Awesome. All looking right. to talking about them at great right. length. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Chris. Hey. <laughs> All right. Next question is from Jason, and this is a very, very forward-looking question. Uh, he is wondering about where you're going after the uh, original series is done, and he specifically asks if you will be covering the animated series. Yes. 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 No! The answer to that is yes. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> We've got conflicting. All right. So the official answer by most of you is yes. The official answer is we would like to. Oh, okay. the, official, the official answer is that we don't know yet ah. which is what we're doing. We've, we've talked about going on just do an album per movie. We've talked about keeping it in chronological order and going with the animated series. <laughs> There's no way in hell we're ever touching TNG because that's <laughs> going to be like a 12-year mission. Yeah, On its so. own. You, you might do it, but a lot of we, us We've talked about many <laughs> variations of yeah. many different things. You, you never the know. The official answer is we don't know. At, the unofficial answer is yes. You, you, you <laughs> never know. At, at the end of uh, Turn Up and Shooter, we might just uh, turn the, turn out the lights and close the door and let the credits roll. <laughs> <laughs> 
We're going to do Star Trek Continues. Ah. It's, all, it's original series, you know, just... True. We'll, we'll move on to the gold key comics. That'll be, that'll be our... <laughs> that'll be our <laughs> gold key comics. Oh, man. That'll be our EP in between. There you go. Excellent. So the next question is from Richard, and he says, this is a general question. Does having a set running order affect the type of song you write as you could potentially have to slow uh, have slow songs grouped together? It's never stopped these yahoos in the past. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I think about that, but I think when we did year one, we weren't really thinking about it because we right. were just all yeah. just jumping in there and grabbing songs, but I think we became more aware of it. But we, we all released to their albums. demos to each other Right. At different times, so it's... Whoever gets the demos out first gets the... Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> sets, sets the mood of the album. Yeah. Well, we don't tend to write a lot of slower tunes. I mean... Not often. So, like, we might get one from each of us in a yeah. set of four. And so we... I think the simple answer is we just haven't run into that problem. Uh, with, with year I, I one, think, we had several slower songs mm-hmm. on the back side. Yeah. I, I think the only time that it really it went, affects it, us it, it is worked. if we have the first song or the last song on the album, because then we, we typically put a little more effort into making those songs really have a punch to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but as far as, as like having slow songs, I, I think it was just a coincidence that the, both menageries turned out to be really slow, mellow. But we'll talk songs. about that later. Yeah. <laughs> this, this time on the Spock's Brain EP, though, I I had a I had a big uphill battle that I did not <clears> win <throat> and gave up pretty easily. In. But when we were deciding on song order, because this is the first album we had to to we could make the order whatever we wanted on the Spock's Brain thing, I guess except for the triples. But <clears throat> this was ten songs we had to put in order. Um, which was quite a feat to all agree on it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I wanted to start with Chris's, which is like six and a half minutes and slow. Like I wanted, I, that's how I wanted to start the album. It's not I all felt slow. really passionate about it. Yeah, mostly. mostly. Spoilers, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But I didn't. I did not win that. That. that uh, I was on your battle. side. Yeah, Mike was the only one on my side. But <laughs> you I kind of wanted to shake things up with a really slow song to kick off an album. I think we all had to make compromises on the order. Yeah, we did. I know I did. Yeah, pretty much the entire album was just... It's, this album is an album of compromises between the bands. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the definition of compromise being no one is happy. I, I'd, say, I'd say more wins and losses than compromises. I, I, yeah. I think putting these songs in order may have been the most challenging <laughs> thing that we've ever done as a band. Yes. <laughs> all right, awesome. And one final question. This is another one from Alex. And she says... <laughs> For the Corbomite Maneuver, Chris always says the Leo Walsh speech when they play it live. Was it difficult to memorize, and does he worry about forgetting the words? Uh, also, does uh, why does Chris say it yes. live? He doesn't worry about it because he forgets <laughs> um, them every time. Yes, I. Yes, it was. Actually, it wasn't that difficult. to. It was difficult, but I, I really, I just had it playing in my car all the time. And so every time I was in my car driving somewhere, I'd just go through it, and then I'd repeat it over and over again. So it wasn't. I don't know if it was difficult. I just had to get it stuck in my head. But every time I do it, before we go on, I'll say it a couple times out loud. And these guys can attest to that. Just to (laughs) make sure that I'm remembering it somewhere. Sometimes I get to it and I have no idea what I'm going to say and it just comes out. And sometimes I get to it and I have to make it up. Sometimes there's some gobbledygook in the middle. Yeah, (laughs) because I just don't remember it. And the reason why it's... The reason why I do it is because it, versus Patrick, who does it on the recording, is because it's too hard for Patrick to do while playing at the same uh, time. So that's that's really the only reason, and I was the only one crazy enough to volunteer to do it. <laughs> nice. So, are there any recordings of alternate uh, live versions of the Leo Walsh speech floating around out there? There is one that I, I know of I'm from sure uh, from from Gen Con. Last year, the, the the kickoff party when Chris had to, had to go to the hospital. Oh, that's yeah. right. Oh, yeah. And uh, our, one of our fans, Hel- <laughs> Helen Lake, that's actually right. came up and was reading the reading the Leo Walsh speech off of her phone. <laughs> and she actually she actually did a good job with yeah, it. Yeah, she did. Yeah. yeah, she's probably heard those songs more than we. That's <laughs> We we have a, a a rather large and growing archive of live material that we just have tucked away and never released. So I'm sure that there's a there's probably a two or three at least versions of Corbomite maneuver in there somewhere. Yeah. But we'll release really someday. Yeah, we someday. might. <clears throat> maybe. Yeah. So maybe maybe another stretch goal release. There you go. Not, <laughs> not, not this time around. 
Maybe, maybe the next Kickstarter campaign. I don't know. We still got a couple, you know, weekly goals we want to meet. I know. Yeah. After, <laughs> after after we close up shop, after Turnabout Intruder, those might go to the to the dump. You know, <laughs> That's true. landfill somewhere. Yeah. Well, maybe as uh, maybe as rewards for the uh, split EP coming up in 2017. All right. So that wraps up all the listener questions and comments that we got. Thank you, everybody, for contributing those. And uh, Craig, do you have any questions that pop up in your mind during that section? Um, no, they were all uh, good questions. And um, just um, I guess we started talking about some songs we haven't done yet. So I'll save any questions until we get to those. All right. Fantastic. Well, thank you, uh, listeners and, and readers out there for submitting those questions. And Keep your eyes open for next Wednesday will be the first episode of uh, What Are Little Songs Made Of in the second series. We'll be starting off with The Corbin White Maneuver, which is track number 11. So, guys, thank you for uh, coming on and answering these questions and talking about the Kickstarter. And we will see you all uh, next Wednesday. Bye.